Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police channel. To our loyal viewers and subscribers at the channel, we are a group of law abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen, but not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because it saves lives. That is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives on this channel. We at this channel aid criminals, their financiers, their supporters, enablers and the likes with a passion and we do not want them over here. Yes, let us repeat ourselves. We do not want any criminal supporters over here. Please, we do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you over here we want you the criminal supporters enablers financiers and all the likes to go to prison or madness let's me repeat myself we are the Jamaica young police channel we do not want the criminal supporters on their circle over here we want you to go to prison or modern moving on to our video Yes, you know, as a little youth, as a young man growing up in Jamaica, I remember the first time I heard his name, Harry Bongles. It was in the 80s. You know, he was at Radication then, um, with Mug and Patty Fisher and all those guys. Yeah, I remember, you know, I remember then. Mug, yeah, and Ludlow, Mort, and all those men. They used to work at Radication with Harry Bongles. And you would hear his name, you know, over and over again. He was like... He was a name brand police eradication then Arabon was. You know, whether or not you want to you know, you want to believe it. So, you know, not a police that used to play. But you have, you know, men like one of them one of the top men that used to be at eradication is a policeman they call Mug. I don't know if he's if he's still alive or I know that he's no longer a police officer, but that man oh man, I I don't think, yes, uh, I don't think Dadrick anyway. Well, uh, I don't think Dadrick, I don't think Dadrick anyway would have the, the same amount of, you know, preemptive strike as Mug. Uh, Mug was a different man, yeah, they're different. But maybe, you know, we know that Dadrick anyway is the man that find the most firearms in Jamaica and one of the man who was a preemptive strike specialist but looking back now as you know as a youth growing up in the ghetto I know that Mug was one of the feared eradication police officer yes I remember one time you know um yeah yeah in 86 there was three guys that were you know they were committing rape in jungle and burglary and rape and Mug uh, went to Toronto uh, Corey Path here, one of the men who was involved in that. Um, um, when Mug did not, they did not find him. They came in a crown and a opal, and they did not find one of one of the men. And Mug that Mug had left a message that you know by a certain time they're supposed to get the men them and the guns. And so said so done. You know they they killed them and tagged them and threw them in. Calisimic Drive in the gully, yes, and you know, with the guns in 1986 August. So Mug was, when you talk about name brand police, Mug, I had to step on them, they'd free them Mug. Uh, Mug was one of the police who uh, clean up a whole heap of them, yes. I know all ugly some was not supposed to like Mug, uh, uh, even at one point, uh, Mug would kill a woman who was a part of the had step again. Mug killed two of them in Warwick Island. He never played. And you don't hear people talk about police officer like Mug. I don't know. Honestly, I know Mug, but I don't even know his right name, his current name. I don't know Mug. I won't go to him as Mug from when I was a boy growing up until in the 90s. Uh, uh, when I was a police officer in the late 80s and 90s, I saw him a few times. You know, um, yeah, we had spoken, but I have never 
I've never asked him his name, you know. I've never, I don't know the man's name, I just know him as mug. Just like a lot of police don't know Harry Bongo's name, say his name is Harry Daly. You know, so, but mug was one of those police that you don't cross him, you know. So, as you can look here, and you will see on the LCD, it says Carpal Parker, yeah, Carpal Lincoln Parker, thief, five keys of Harry Bongo's coke, and he let the Klansman gang members kill him in De La Vega City. So some people were saying that um, Power Ranger, so you know, they're, they're showing you the difference between both men. They say Power Ranger, you know, thief, two key of Renita Adams' cork and he's alive. So some people would say, boy, if he was aligned with Renita Adams, Lincoln Parker would be still here. But that's how it is, you know. Have you ever heard of the name Harry Bongos? Yeah, some people would say, uh, yeah, Harry Bongos is one of those police officers that people is well known by the Jamaican people. Yes, even, you know, especially the pe people from our walks of life know Harry Bongos. Harry Bongo is a man who is involved in all kind of thing, music, <laughs> drugs, bike, everything where you can take, uh, um, passport, um, visa racket. Bongo's all used to sell uh, weed in a Bronx, in my own police name, um, Wilson. And Bongo's, Bongo's met Wilson even resign. The two of them used to sell um, weed in outer house of Bronx. I uh, saw so Wilson in the, ni early in the 90s and he told me that Bungus why I'm, why I'm resigning. And I'm just repeating what the man said and the man said, you know, imagine we used to sell weed out of our house in our Bronx and I decided to see him <laughs> resign when Bungus was carpal, you know. So a long time Bungus are a uh, long time Bungus are uh, 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 criminal, you know, I don't know, you know. You understand? Yeah, I remember, you know, Wilson, uh, he told me on White Plains Road in the 90s. Yeah, in the middle of the uh, middle of the nineties, uh, he told me that I don't know what happened to Wilson. You know, but uh, he was at Spanish Town at the time, and he wanted vacation leave, and Bongo didn't give him, so he just resigned. You know, so he said cost him out. Yeah, so yeah, so yes, Ari Bongo, whose current name is Ari Daly, one of Jamaica's most notorious policemen who is a very close confidant of Kenneth Skendan Black, yes. Harry Bongos is one of those police officers who are more dangerous than criminals. And you will find out why. A policeman was his boy, Corporal Lincoln Parker, born, raised and bred in De La Vega City, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. That's all near to the uh, Spanish Town police station. And he knew Harry Bongos from he was a young man growing up. It was the same Harry Bongos who helped Parker to join the police force and was instrumental in getting him an early promotion. But you know, when you are around certain people in the police force, their friendship is not just friendship. It comes with other benefits and, and the junior have to deliver to the senior for them to have coverage in the police force. Corporal Parker was one of those boys in the police force and one of Ari Bungles boy. He was tasked to do all kinds of things for Bungles who would send him on various errands like collecting his share of extortion money from members of the Klansman gang. Sometimes the money was delivered by James Hines, City Post, Lenny Bud, Blackman or Tesha Miller. And sometimes the late Donovan Bulby Bennett himself who knew Ari Bungles and Renita Adams Personally, yes, Bulby knew these top-ranking police officers because they have one thing in common, the PMP LGBTQ plus party, and their loyalty was to the party and not to the police force. Unlike Renita Adams, Paul Ranger, a police officer who used to work at crime management unit, was lucky enough to thief two keys, you know, of Renita Adams' coke out and live, and live, to joke about the same in June 2023. So, you know, basically, you know, um, Power Ranger, you know, had stolen two key of Renita Adams' coke. And him lift talk about it, he may not have to pay him back on him, just thief it and, you understand? So, you know, lose him, he didn't lose his life. So they're saying, boy, if Parker, Corporal Lincoln Parker was not that lucky as his relationship with Harry Bungles went south, when he went on one of his errands to Buff Bay, Portland, 
where we collected a package of about 40 keys of coke from an acquaintance of our bungles and took the entire amount to the superintendent at Spanish Town at a house in Homestead, Spanish Town, where Chen Chen used to stay before he had to run away because of pressure from Renita Adams. Corporal Parker's first mistake was that he had stopped in Stonehill and dropped off 15 keys of coat that he was to take to Harry Bungles. Unbeknownst to Parker, he was not authorized to take any of the product, but he took it anyway without permission or consent of Harry Bungles. Then he left for Spanish Town and arrived at the address at Homestead, Spanish Town. Corporal Parker gave Harry Bungles the 25 key of coke, key of coke to him and told him that he had taken some of the drugs. Parker has never seen Bungles get mad at him. Remember that this was the man who is responsible for Parker accession in the police force. Plus, was the man who is responsible for everything that happened to him in the police force. Bungles knew that Parker was a criminal minded police officer and if you were not willing to commit crimes for Bungles, he had no use for you. The relationship is a one-way relationship and it is for being friends with Bungles and nothing else. You won't benefit from the relationship one iota. And all of this is based on information from Special Branch Police Officer. You understand? So immediately, Harry Bungles read the riot act and made his declaration known to Corporal Parker that he must return his drugs or their, or their value or you are going to die. Corporal Parker did not take it seriously on hearing the threats and thought to himself that Bungles would not dare kill him or get anyone to kill him. Remember that he is a police officer so he thought that that would insulate from what was coming for him. Corporal Parker was warned by Tesha Miller and other men within the Klansman gang that he must return the, the big man's drugs or else he will be killed. When he questioned the men's loyalty and fealty as they knew each other from childhood, they made it known it was nothing personal about business and Bungus was of more value to the gang than him, Lincoln. Wow. That is when he realized that being a part of a criminal organization and being a police officer does not provide that amount of coverage or protection from one when you are from a community when criminality is a way of normal life to most of the people living there. That's De La Vega City. Corporal Parker, having sold the drugs to a known drugs dealer on the hill that up Stone Hill collected the money and paid Harry Bungus for eight of the coke, for eight keys of the coke, Harry Bungus told him that he wanted the payment for the seven and that he hadn't paid for as yet and his decision to call off the it was not over. Parker started to preach to Harry Bungus by reminding him of the many crimes that he had committed for him and and the Klansman gang and asked that this be forgiven because he was in some financial problem. If he had known that it would have come to this, he would not have done what he did because he looked up to Bungles as his father and was pretty much crying. Harry Bungles being a Caesar, seasoned artless and professional criminal, professional criminal, Corporal Parker's tears did not touch, in, touch his heart or any part of his body as he had none or a soul. So basically they're saying boy Bungus not a soul nor art you know. So I'll do him the other ball and them thing that not in the face Bungus because all Bungus want him want back him coke or him money. And the man on a play the man. So he didn't touch nowhere. So he was given one month to pay up or else both men never speak again to each other. The relationship went south and never returned to the days when Parker enjoyed being in the company of Harry Bungles. Locking, he locking illegal guns for him and collecting various packages and going on several er errands for him. If he were caught doing and committing these crimes, he would go to prison for Bungles and now his life is on the line. One evening, when he came home from work, he was sitting, looking into space. His mother asked him what was going on with him because she could sense that something was wrong with her son 
and he brushed it off as nothing but one of those days that he was not having a good day as his girlfriend and him having some disagreements. Ari Bungles is the one is one of the police officers who have used his authority to abuse or intimidate people or maybe trigger happy and willing to use excessive force. It doesn't matter what the person is, that bungles and everyone knows not to play with him. Evil criminals know that this is a man you do not cross. He's a corrupt, he is corrupt and uses his position to enrich himself or his friends. The character of Ari Bungles is not a fictional character. The example is that he is a police officer who is more dangerous than criminals. Bungles, Bungles is a criminal minded police officer who has constantly getting into trouble with the law from raping his helper and eating her pum pum plus bite the woman's genital. Bungles was arrested and charged with rape but was acquitted as a late blackadouche Black a douche from jungle and Skendang paid off the complainant who was able to leave leave Jamaica leave for leave Jamaica for a greener pastor and he was able to return to his job as a superintendent of police. However, that did not stop Ari Bungus again from getting into trouble. He was arrested and charged and convicted later in an extortion scheme. And this time this person was very close to him. That man is a deportee and he related to Bongo, another criminal from Spanish Town. And that witness wanted to go back to England, so he set up our bongos. And he's now living in Europe. Yeah, so that's that's how it is, you know. So however, he also has a mean streak and and he is not above using his authority to bully and intimidate people. In re real life, there have been many cases of bungles as a police officer who have abused his authority by divulging information about witnesses in murder case in murder cases to suspects and accused, thus causing them to lose their lives. That's how brutal this man and he is revered, celebrated and emulated by many criminal minded police officers. These cases have led to innocent deaths and eroded public trust in the police force. And Jamaican at all. It is important to remember that not all police officers are like Ari Bungles. Many dedicated and professional police officers put their lives on the line daily to protect the public. However, it is also essential to be aware of the potential dangers posed by police officers who abuse their authority. Corporal Parker did not return Ari Bungles 15 key of coke. He only returned 8 as reported by us at the Jamaica Young Police Channel because he thought he had some form of insulation as a man born and bred with the likes of Tesha Miller who was a part of the hierarchy of the Klansman gang and he felt safe in his community of De La Vega City which is right beside the, you know, the Spanish Town Police Station. What Carpal Parker did not know is that there is, was no honest criminal, none. Although he in uniform and at work would have boasted that he is a clans police officer or a police officer that yes a police officer boasting about being a part of a criminal organization and to him it was cool things to say at work and how he was close to criminals in spanish town that is the level of desensitization we have reached in jamaica when a policeman can boast of his affiliation to a criminal gang Little did Carper Lincoln Parker know that the same gang he was boasting about being a part of and affiliated with them had a surprise for him and his family. Have you ever contemplated your death since this week? Yes. Yes, you. You, our loyal viewers and subscribers. Yes. Do you wonder about how you will die? Do you believe that if you are murdered, if you are killed, there will be even one witness to tell the police who did it? If you are murdered within 50 yards of your home where you were born, raised and bred, even one of your parents' neighbor, neighbors will be brave enough to tell the truth about your death. 
we do not want to contemplate these questions and we certainly do not want to be in the actual position to answer these questions after the brutal murder of a son, yes, Corporal Lincoln Parker. In the hours before dawn on Sunday, June 4, 2006, Corporal Lincoln Parker was murdered inside De La Vega City, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Corporal Lincoln Palmer received multiple gunshot wounds about 40 yards from his parents' home, where he had spent his childhood and early adulthood. Corporal Parker's body laid on the ground at the foot of a JPS pole, equipped with working streetlights. <laughs> Corporal Lincoln Parker was murdered in the presence and complete view of several patrons attending a dance. In the same community, he thought that he was safe. What he did not know is that as a police officer from these acidic communities, you are not safe or insulated and not because you are part of their gang make you even safer when the orders come from someone who has more power than you in the police force. Wow, police officer in a gang. And you know, say gang, they are lawbreakers. You know, all oh, them do it. The gang relies the gang relies on this person, Ari Bungus, for protection, information, and ongoing in police investigations and strategy. Police officers who lived or work in acidic communities are often in danger, regardless of whether they are part of a gang. The gang may see them as a threat, or they may be targeted by other criminals who want to get revenge on the police for killing one of their cronies. Even if the gang does not pose a direct threat, the, po the police officer may still be in danger if caught in a gang war's crossfire. In addition, the police officer may be put in a difficult position if they receive orders from someone with more power than them in the police force. If these orders conflict with the officer's moral compass, in which Scarborough Lincoln Park I never have none because or if you be police and in and align with gang, affiliate with gang, both you with gang, plus you are dealing with drugs, you never have no moral compass. In betray him out of office. They may be forced to follow directive or do what they believe is right. This can be a tough decision, putting the officer's career and even their lives at risk. Here is a perfect example of the challenges that police officers face in acidic communities. These officers are often caught between a rock and a hard place and must make difficult decisions that can have serious consequences. It is important to remember that these officers are just doing their jobs and they deserve our respect and support. Corporal Lincoln Parker was one of those, one of these police officers who felt comfortable around men from his community with illegal weapons walking past him as if their guns were legal because he was friends with criminals as a police officer that's a big mistake and a no-no you don't do that as a cop being friends with criminals because there is not a single honest criminal as a police officer criminals are going to eat your guts just for being a law enforcement officer he did not get the memo or follow his gut instinct as a police officer to know that to stay away from criminals. Corporal Lincoln Parker made a big mistake by being friends with criminals. As a police officer, he is supposed to uphold the law and protect the public. By being friends with criminals, he risks himself and the public. There is no such thing as an honest criminal. All criminals, by definition, dishonest because they break the law. Let me repeat that for police officers and for our loyal viewers and subscribers. There is no such thing as an honest criminal. All criminals are by definition dishonest because they break the law. They may be friendly and charming, but they are still criminals. Corporal Parker actions could have had serious consequences if he had been caught disregarding disregarding criminals. He could have been fired from the police force. He could have even been charged with a crime or even worse. 
police officers need to maintain their distance from criminals. You can mix, but you don't dissolve. You know, number one, if when I was a pol when I was a detective, if you saw me in the company talking to a criminal, it must be information that criminal is giving me. I am not any friends I ain't a criminal, period. You understand? But some people, hey, that's the all them see thing of them. One for say boy, yeah. Number one, where I'm from, George Bang don't know me. Never, never see me. He, he might see me, but me and him never talk. Because me know George, I'm a criminal. That's the kind of person I am. Me know Willie I got. Yeah, me and Willie I got talk. Never tell him thanks. Reason being, I don't want nothing from the criminal. So he used, to, he used to lash out and say me a labor right. Because I don't take nothing from him. Because I don't want a criminal to have no secret for me. You understand? Because... Criminal will always be criminal. I ain't trying to give criminal things to talk about you. Then we disrespect you. You understand? So I never and I know them. I know all of these things. So I never align myself with those kind of people. I see them, talk to them. That's it. But otherwise, no, me and them no not a role. And the always are some little little police. We always the own people like them. Just to say, boy, they my friend and and the same police. You know, we all give them life. We all these people. You know, stupid. You understand, but that's how it is. Because sometimes you've been around these people, and in the long run, it's even cost you more just being friends with them than you being a friend with them. Because, you know, financially, they are not giving you nothing. More than you just being in them company and say, boy, you are them friend. You know, it's just, just like how a whole people. You have enough police. You know, they will tell us, oh, I'm scared of a friend and this and that. And then you know, I'm a bigger friend than him. You are scared of a friend. You understand? You yeah, learn that every man have every man yeah you you know every man have a bigger friend than you. Cause you are soft, so. You understand? So that's one I mean reason why men like um M for the weird. That's why them uh, in a era they don't want weird only because weird is not a compromising um detective. Yeah, and the people them in a south from the same people them from South Clarendon, they said it in you know? They told me, yeah, you understand. A lot of them they say um, one of the best crime officer they ever get in a, in a Clarendon is DSPU, M for Weird. Weird that used to work down a south and down a exit and them places. And them say Mr. Weird is one of police officer that is not compromised. But the police force would not keep him there at Maple because them says Ken them that's how them say them says Ken and Tilly um Tilly um what name are Tilliba Tillibop. Tiliba uh, or Tiliba, you know, them kind of control him and them say man like Natty Wink and Natty Wink now, not so fond of weird, not, Natty Wink no fond of weird because when weird was not, when weird not there, him can't, them can't, him can't control the entire CIB staff in you know, Clarendon. But weird, when weird was there, him not having none of it, so that's why, them, that's why weird have to leave. Can you believe that? A people that uh, this is Yeah, so we have reached the end of part one, you know, Corporal Lincoln Parker, you know, at the you know, MT 15 key of Aribongo's Coke. And Aribongo said the clansman young man kill him in De La Vega City, 40 yards away from his home. And it is alleged, you know, we don't have any eyewitness to say the same. It's just based on what the, you know, member. Former member of the special branch unit had passed on to us, and we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel is just sharing it with you, the loyal viewers and subscribers, to show you that you know even the police force, you know, corruption is is rife, and you know, it was rife then, and it's still rife now. You understand? Have yourself a beautiful day, Jamaica Young Police Channel. And before we go, part two will be coming up shortly, so we won't let you wait. You'll get part two shortly. Have a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.